What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Honda Civic hatchback, courtesy of Apple Honda of Hanover in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so today, we're in this one because I have always liked the styling, at least of this newer generation of Civic. I think it looks absolutely amazing. You also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well. Well, so that's going to save you some money and there is one major change for the 2024 model year for this one so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 civic hatchback first one is the major change which is they have brought back the lx trim level for the 2024 hatch and that is starting at twenty four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars which means the 2024 civic hatchback is actually now one thousand dollars less approximately than the 2023 model year so that is pretty darn cool but sport trim level starts at 26,350 exl which actually is the one we are in today starting at 28,650 and lastly the sport touring going for 31,450 dollars but as you can imagine with all of this trim levels there are a couple different power plants available for this one so first power plant belongs to the lx and the sport trim levels and the one that we do not have today that one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower at 6500 rpm 138 pound feet of torque coming in at 4200 rpm that power of course being sent to the front wheels through a cvt or a six speed manual yes that is still available that is amazing zero to 60 time approximately 9.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 30 in the city 38 on the highway for the cvt a little bit less than for the manual coming in at 26 in the city 36 on the highway either way taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other power plant the one that we have today that one is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder that belongs to the exl and the sport touring by the way that one puts out 180 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 177 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm that power being sent to front wheels through yet again a six-speed manual hallelujah for the sport touring only i will say that you can't get it in the exl or a cvt zero to 60 time approximately 7.3 seconds so substantially quicker with this edge it's setup with mpg numbers coming in at 28 the city 37 on the highway for the six-speed manual at least and then 30 one city 39 on the highway for the cvt again taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test or anything like that in our civic i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes so there are a few of them you got econ normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and actually the climate control settings as well so this econ button let me just go ahead and press that i do have the ac on right now if i were to press that what ends up happening is it dials back the ac i remember this from my civic back in the day and it does actually greatly improve your miles per gallon. I remember driving on the highway with the Civic being rated at like 40 miles per gallon, and I could get up to 50 miles per gallon on the highway, and it was mostly highway driving. So if you press that econ button and you can deal with a little less AC, you can get substantially more miles per gallon. I'll say that from experience having that Civic for 230,000 miles, which also, by the way, speaks to its reliability. But anyways, now I haven't got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test in our turbocharger four cylinder and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 honda civic hatchback here up to speed all right believe we have found our straightaway here in three two one go not too bad on the turbo lag there actually really didn't even notice it this thing got some go though son <laughs> that's actually decent 100% not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. And again, this is substantially quicker than a Sport or an LX Civic hatchback. I will say that because I actually drove the uh, the Sport trim level last year. And this thing is so much quicker than that. Having said that, the thing in the back of my mind is still going to be the reliability. Of course, with naturally aspirated engines, you are going to get substantially better reliability than really any turbocharged engine. But having said that, if you wanted more power, this is pretty darn decent. I will say that. But anyways... 
to go along with that acceleration is always braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at 122 feet as I just pulled up to that stop sign there. Braking feel is 100% perfectly fine. Little bit on the firmer side of things, which I personally love and uh, just feels perfectly fine. There's no dead spots in the braking or anything like that, but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes right now as we are on super smooth roads it's fine but i will say i have been feeling a good bit of the road in my short little test drive here today that's to be expected in really any compact car so i'll give that little disclaimer but expect to feel a little bit more of the road but i will say it is not as bad as a ford mustang that you feel a ton of the road but anyways that's off topic as far as steering feel goes it's wonderful love the steering feel in the civic i will say it is substantially better than let's just say the corolla that is a very loosey-goosey steering feel the reason i like it in the civic is it does have the heavier weight to it so it better instantly points you in the direction that you want to go so for me it feels more sporty i guess you could say driving a civic than you would feel driving a corolla i'll just put it that way as far as cabin noise goes it's perfectly fine you do get a little bit of road noise but it's nothing too crazy it's pretty much as you would expect a compact car to sound like when it comes to uh interior noise and things like that touching on visibility though i can see perfectly fine out the back of course it's not going to be quite as good as a civic sedan but for me i can see fine out the back 100 not going to have any issues there do want to also mention that with the sport touring trim level at least you can also get rain sensing windshield wipers that comes standard on the sport touring so what that is is whenever the civic detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's automatically going to turn on those windshield wipers for you so it's kind of like automatic headlights it's just one less thing you got to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive in our 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder <laughs> anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 honda civic hatchback all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 honda civic hatchback finished in crystal black pearl yes if you are a fan of pirates of the caribbean this is the black pearl this one is for you but anyways let's go ahead and start with where this one is made take a look at the vin first character is the number one indicating that the civic hatchback is built and assembled here in the u.s in case you were curious but as always let's go ahead and start up front on this one led headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board you do get led daytime running lights along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams though for every single trim level across the board meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you though so that is a wonderful feature and i absolutely personally love it and then down below if you were to go with the sport touring trim trim level only you will find led fog lights otherwise you're essentially going to get these little black pieces of plastic that go in there so that is what you guys are looking at right there so anyways i probably would go ahead and add the fog lights if that's even an option to this one because i think that would look dang good on this one but Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Civic Hatch. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will actually be gloss black if you were to go with the Sport, and then all the other trim levels are going to be body colored basically. But heated side mirrors coming with the EXL and Sport Touring, and then LED integrated turn signals coming with the Sport Touring trim level only if you wanted those. Then take a look down at the wheel set. They will differ, of course, depending upon the trim level that you go with. 16 inch alloys for the LX, 17 inch alloys for the EXL, that of course is what you guys are looking at, and then 18 inch alloys for the Sport and Sport Touring, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Civic hatch here, rear window wiper with the fluid cleaner on the top portion of the window. Let me actually show you guys that real quick. So that's where the actual, I guess, windshield wiper fluid comes out. But I want to emphasize that because back in my RSX back in the day, that was my first car. I didn't have the windshield wiper fluid. I just had the rear wiper. So it's pretty cool that hatchbacks are getting that nowadays. But anyways, LED taillights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You also have this like the video lettering spelled out on the left here. So anyways, of course I'm joking, but go ahead and like the video. I do greatly appreciate it. If you learned anything from this video, please go ahead and smash the like button. But anyways, just below it all, you will get a kind of a rear diffuser if you go with that sport trim level. Obviously, since we have the EXL, we're not really gonna get that, but so it is gonna differ slightly in terms of styling, but 
down below it all, you guys will actually see there are dual exhaust outlets for our 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. You're gonna find a single exhaust outlet with the naturally aspirated four cylinder though, but nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Civic hatch, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there is a button to unlock it on the key fob, but ultimately there's a rubber button on the hatch itself. That is how you're gonna go ahead and open that one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 24.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down then for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, of course. There actually is a cargo cover. Pretty nice to see that. There's a grocery bag hook back there. That's something you typically find on SUVs. So love seeing that in the Civic. That's pretty cool. Also chrome plated tie down anchors. I saw that back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are gonna find a spare tire with a little bit of space. You could probably put an ice scraper around that as well if you wanted to. But anyways, then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 37.4 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders. You guys are looking at that right now. That comes with the EXL and sport touring trim levels only. So basically the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. So I love that. Dual rear USB charging ports only for the sport touring trim level. And then unfortunately there is no rear ventilation. You might not need it in the size of a vehicle, but still wouldn't have mind seeing it back there. But they make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the LX and sport trim levels, leather seating for the EXL and sport touring trims, eight way power driver seat for the EXL and sport touring, four way power adjustable passenger seat for the sport touring trim, and then heated front seats for the EXL and sport touring trims. But overall seating was incredibly comfortable. I will say that absolutely no issues finding my perfect driving position. Position. So Honda always usually does a pretty good job with their seating. I'll put it that way. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is going to be leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up. However, if you do go with that LX trim level, it's going to be wrapped in urethane. So I did want to mention that. 10 and 2 grips then are perfectly fine. But then making our way up to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your nice Honda logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, the button to unlock the rear tailgate or the rear hatch there. And then the hold button, that is going to be a remote start. So you could start this one up on super cold days in Pennsylvania, like we quite often get. But ultimately, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just to the left of that air vent there. But once started up, I will say typical gauge cluster is what you're looking at, but there is a 10.2 inch fully digital gauge cluster for the sport touring trim level only. Otherwise, you are going to get what you're currently looking at, which is a partial digital display. So the digital side is on the left and then you got your uh, speedometer on your right there, but there are steering wheel mounted controls. You can adjust what is on there. It gives you things like your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Of course, trip A, trip B. So quite a bit you can scroll through up there if you wanted to. A digital speedometer as well. I don't wanna to forget to mention that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. You're gonna get a power moonroof for the EXL and Sport Touring. I love that. I love that we have that power moonroof, but automatic climate control for the LX and Sport, meaning you set the temperature, it's gonna automatically get to it for you. But dual zone climate control for the EXL and Sport Touring, so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for the Sport Touring trim level only. Aluminum foot pedals, again, for the Sport Touring trim level only. But I do like this honeycomb mesh design that I remember seeing in the Integra as well. I think that looks pretty darn good. It's a good design element, I'll put it that way. I also like this gloss black insert that we got in our EXL trim level. Why am I harping on that? Because last year when I reviewed the Sport, I remember that being a uh, matte black plastic. So much bigger fan of the gloss black. It ties together with the perimeter of this honeycomb mesh design up here. So I love that. Well done, Honda. It's better than the matte black plastic. I'll just put it that way. Just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage, more than likely to put your cell phone up there. Surrounding the shifter, a nice texturized design. Most of the competition will leave that a matte gray plastic. But the fact that Honda finished this in a nice texturized design, I love it. They crushed it with that. Well done, Honda. Again, you got dual cup holders just to the right of that electromechanical parking brake and within the center armrest. Actually, a decent amount of storage. Well more than the Corolla, believe it or not. So I will just say that. But anyways, 
Interior quality actually surprised me. You got a lot more than I expected to find. So that was definitely working for me. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. You're gonna find a seven inch color touchscreen display for the LX Sport and EXL. So that's what you guys are looking at. But then a nine inch color touchscreen display for the Sport Touring. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but with the Sport Touring, you will get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So I do wanna emphasize that. Factory navigation system for the Sport Touring trim level only. You can also check out your radio information up there. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's gonna be three of them, four speakers and 160 watts for the LX, eight speakers and 180 watts for the Sport and EXL trim levels, and then a 12 speaker Bose sound system with a subwoofer for the Sport Touring trim level. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I love myself. Fun song, but uh, yeah, clarity wasn't the best. Bass was okay, but yeah, clarity wasn't the best on that thing. I bet you the Bose sound system went absolutely crushed in the Civic. And let me tell you guys, the Integra sound system, the uh, ELS Studio and the Integra, the same size as the Civic, basically, that one is amazing. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Civic in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board with a couple different angles as well, which is always pretty cool, but that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start with the best part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. From Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard will be Honda Sensing. So what does that give you? I will answer that for you. Collision mitigation, braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, and traffic sign recognition. But then if you were to go with the EXL that we have today, you're also gonna get a blind spot monitoring system. You guys can see those little cars in the side mirrors there. And then sport touring is gonna add to that rear cross traffic alert and front and rear parking sensors as well so ultimately when it comes to my final thoughts i personally love that a six-speed manual is still available on the civic hatchback so so many vehicles are doing away with that so that is pretty darn cool in my opinion great design as well i said that when they first redesigned this newest generation civic i love the design to it excellent safety you can't beat an iihs top safety pick plus it doesn't get any better than that also, I love that it's $1,000 less than last year's model because of that new LX trim level again. I don't know why they got rid of it, but it's cool that this thing is more affordable yet again. I think the only thing I could really think of to make this car just a little bit better is uh, multicolor ambient lighting. Since this is more kind of a, a tuner kind of fun car being a hatchback, it's kind of sporty. I think multicolor ambient lighting would just look pretty darn good in this thing. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Civic hatch in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.